Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hamda. New Ant-Man. It sucks. All right, moving on. I am ready, however, for the new Silent Trailers game show because I did once again catch up and see every movie ever made. Silent Trailers is where Hamda, who knows nothing about movies, knows nothing about actors and actresses, she watches a movie trailer on Silent, tries to describe it to us. And uh, how did you describe the Matrix, Hamda? I think uh, water, but it wasn't. A lot of blinking, um, well, perhaps some weird lubrication in some parts, um, a plugging in of sorts. Um, uh, uh, oh, tethered sweaters like the 80s. Um, OK, so that's the that's the kind of silliness. And then we, me against a group of comics, have to guess what the fuck she's trying to say. And green writing on the time. wall. OK, all right, well. Anyway, uh, that'll be happening this Sunday. And the people I will be playing against, Rena Calm, Frank Conniff, oh. Shelton Lindsay, Rod Morrow. Scary stuff. Yeah, yeah, actually, you should be scared. That's quite the lineup of moviegoers. Yeah. This Sunday. Rena, Rena doesn't have a place to live. She lives in her, her vehicle. Yeah. So she probably goes into movies like it's her house, you know, like just for the bathroom. So you're dead. This Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. It's on the Keith and the Girl YouTube channel. Silent trailers. Be the word. All right. Uh, make sure you join our YouTube channel membership. Subscribe to Keith and the Girl on YouTube now. And we'll see you this Sunday. Also, make sure you get your tickets to Keith and the Girl week. I'm going to be doing stand up again. We'll be live in person. Get details and tickets now. Keith and the Girl dot com slash tickets. Today's guest. I mean, come on. She has her Comedy Central Arabia half hour, uh, Gotham Comedy Live. What are we talking about here? It's the great Athair Yacoub. Hello, Athair. Hello. Hello. How are you? You set it up like there should be more things, but, you know, I should work harder. That's okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 First of all, <laughs> hello. Look at all hello. the Middle Eastern guilt you bring with you. I know, you're right? Like, right off the bat. Like, I'm not enough. I'm not a doctor of comedy. What have I done with my life? I heard I heard your hesitation in my ability and I concur. I completely agree so that I'm my a mother. Piece of shit. <laughs> yes. And I should do enough. And if my mother is listening, just know that I know and you should know that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> That's gotta be every introduction. <laughs> well, I'm looking at uh you could type in, of course, any guest we've ever had on uh Keithmagirl.com slash and then the, the name, for example, here, Ather Yakub. And I it's it's been way too long since you've been on. This was back in the July of last year. A theory returns to Keith and the girl as the group discusses her family, her lover and the state of the world. We did just have Valentine's Day. I'm going to need an update. Could we leave that description? Uh, here's the show my update. Up? I may You're or may not have BV or yeast infection or UTI. Just got back from urgent care. So Valentine's went great. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you're getting you. some? Is that what I'm hearing? Is that <laughs> getting some some bacteria? Yeah, I'm still okay. with the same guy. Same guy. Um, yeah, things are things are good. I mean, Valentine's is you know you're like oh it's stupid, but then you also want to do something. You're like they need to still kind of like do something. So we just ha made dinner and you know, and then oh, and then I got so drunk that I went on Instagram Live, which I haven't done in three years hmm. since the pandemic. I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I went on live right now? And then I did. And then all these like crazy, like religious Muslims were following me. And I was like showing my wine. And I was like, I guess I'm losing followers as we speak. And then I like invited my neighbor over on live because she tuned in. And I was like, come on over for wine. And then she brought some wine over. And we proceeded to drink another bottle. And uh, Wednesday was not fun. I was very hungover. And now I have some sort of bacteria in my coochie. <laughs> So, uh, all I think that's a successful Valentine's Day. What did you do with this wine? Just drink. Oh, okay. I'm just, just checking. I'm just that... checking. I, don't know an, the... I didn't have a cork opener. Okay, you gotta, you gotta get creative. <laughs> I've been doing my Kegels. Do you guys make your own cards? Um, I like making cards. Actually, we didn't do cards. I only do cards for people on their birthday. Like only someone that I'm really, really close to, or dating, or like. I mean, it's rare that I'll make a car. I just get so because I do it on. I don't know. Not a random on, person some, on the street. You got to know them. I got to. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. They, they have to be, it's, it's high standards for me. If I cook for you or make you a card, then you are forever in my life. Right. right. Do I you... don't know. I, so you don't make cards for your mom? Yeah, I mean, the jury's out on if we're keeping her around. No, no, I don't. I don't. I only, <laughs> I don't know if she's going to be, oh God, it's morbid. Um, I don't, it's too much effort. I mean, when I was a kid, you know, how do you make those handmade, maybe I need to go back to handmade Valentine's cards. Honestly, what stresses me out is trying to do it online and make it look all cute and then print it out. And then let have, me ask like, you this. this. Let me ask nice. you this. As we talk to you, because we're alive and because you were raised Muslim and, you know, you're not really supposed to be drinking. You're not supposed to be talking about certain things and you're not supposed to be doing some of the stuff that you're doing. Do we sometimes hear a hesitation in your speech because you'll be you'll be speaking you, the flow is going and then you suddenly realize somebody could that be my listening. dad might be tuned in. Yeah. Or someone that's not knows your my dad, dad. Yeah. It's someone that knows your dad because they're tuning into something. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So is that the hesitation? And is that sometimes your your sort of switch in the middle of a sentence to to a different thought? And then you kind of switch back because you realize you're uh, safe in United States soil and you're just like flipping out again because yes! I used to go through this. I used to go through this and I, I recognize the stages in other, you know, Middle Eastern people who are basically first generation. They'll be like, yeah, it's totally normal. I'm fitting in. We're just talking, man. And then you think of like a cousin because like someone in the audience looks like someone that you grew up with. And it's like, oh, my God. What did I just say in the last 10 minutes? My father's going to hear this verbatim. You still have that in you. A hundred percent. I don't know how to get rid of that. I don't know if it ever, you know, leaves you or I, I really don't. I, I hesitate in my standup too, because there's certain things I'll do if it's like a small room and I'm like, oh, no one knows me here. But if it was something that was going to be, I don't know, recorded or potential like a bigger crowd, then I'm like, oh, I shouldn't say that joke. Um, it's hard. That's, it's a stressful way to live. That's the kind of guilt that culture and tradition brings you. And it, it it's sort of the kind of thing that keeps you together because otherwise you just go and do your own thing and recognize that your own thing is actually okay. And then, you know, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z that you grew up with. Keith, as a person who was born and raised in this country, is a white guy in this country, Thank you. is not from Arab <laughs> descent of any kind, is not associated with Middle East. There is no Arab in this family! <laughs> do people like you feel that kind of thing? Did you First have of all, that? I misunderstood. I thought you said, is that why people like you? And the answer is going to be yes. <laughs> uh, what's your question? Uh, did you experience this? Is this because I, I know that... if I meet someone that has like my face in any way and it could be it doesn't have to be Middle Eastern. It could be Italian a lot of times, Greek, like we all have that guilt face, that guilt face shape. Is your shape face? Does that come from guilt also in the same way your parents could always hear you? They could always figure it out like you're shaming your family. You're ruining the dynamic. Everyone will will think that, you know, you are representing the whole family and you're destroying the functionality of it you ever felt that no there's there's a lot <laughs> of my faces nice. right <laughs> there's a lot of my faces so they don't stand out like oh am i fucking up right now you ah, know oh, I see. oh yeah except if we're you know we're, uh, if people think that we're mistaken for someone else that person will also just get in trouble but you have a white face so you're That's like true. <laughs> all of you are getting off scot-free whereas right. we don't want to implicate the other person yeah so. you can't arrest us all you know <laughs> yeah because there's really way too many they don't even know I how have... to arrest us sometimes by the way when a fear says getting in trouble she does not mean being arrested am i right she means like your father talks to you in the tone yeah. oh yeah, yeah. yeah. it's oh, not getting yeah. my, not concerned every time my dad calls like my voice changes and then like everything about me changes my you don't even have to know my or know what i'm saying or who i'm you could automatically tell about how rigid i get and i'm just like a robot like salam alaikum because he's the only person that says salam alaikum to me and i'm like well alaikum salam dad and it's stressful. Even if he's just like, how's your day going? I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? He literally, when she's saying, salam alaikum, peace be with you is how he's starting the conversation. She's like, that is so stressful. Then I have to say, and also with you. And then that's just fucking stressful. And then he's asking me about my day. How am I supposed to tell him about my day? I had a day. It was in America. I'm dead. Just kill me. <laughs> 
that's is accurate. all of that stuff. Yes, this all of that accurate. stuff. No, I imagine re- you really have to talk to them. My parents couldn't really hold a conversation. I realized uh, that I, when I would call them, I'm really just doing stand up uh, because their their pauses. I can tell they're really nervous. Uh, I just want this to end. So I'm like, all right, and here's the punchline, and good night. <laughs> Must that be nice. How about I talk to your parents instead? You can talk okay. to my dad. Okay. Aren't they so easy? Hey, Americans, your parents are so easy. Easy breezy. And they always think we're nice because we're going, we were taught to do all the po- overly polite things. Can I take out your garbage? Is it garbage? No, let me, please, please let me, me do your please. dishes. Even though I didn't even eat here and I'm just t- stopping. Yeah. And <laughs> I think it's true. Like American, like all my American friends and their, their families with, and their parents think that we are so polite and going above and beyond. And I'm like, no, my mom, I can hear my mom, in my head. If I don't do these things or offer these things, then, um, it's like being super rude. So what we consider just normal behavior, it's like, oh, people th- like really appreciate it and think it's like above and beyond. Have you ever in your life sat down next to someone and crossed your foot where your ankle is on your knee and the sole of your foot is facing the person who's next to you? No. About to vomit no. I, 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 I can hear my dad now. No, no. I didn't know that that was also, I was trying to explain this to my boyfriend who's Haitian and I don't know what it came up and I was like, you know, just you meet my parents. Don't you dare show the bottom of your foot to them. Mm. You know, you might as well whip your dick out before you do that. Because in fact, in fact, it. if you feel comfortable in any way, you're doing something wrong. Please, there you go. when you see my parents, as long as you are feeling discomfort, you are in the That's zone. The right. oh, That's it. They love you. That's if you're like, spot. If you're like, oh, your parents are nice. Oh, my God. Wow, this food is great. And you're just eating and you're comfortable and you, you feel like yourself and you feel like you could be yourself. They're tricking you and you just got tricked. <laughs> Do not be yourself. As much as they encourage, no, please eat. They're calling you disgusting in whatever language we speak. Look at this guy eating. <laughs> we asked him to eat. And he's eating. Look, what, he's does eating he not have a home? Face. Does he not yeah. have a food at home? <laughs> Did he not get fed? Look at it. Look at it. Look at how American families, they just eat. You cut, They come to your house and they eat. No, no, please, please eat. We like watching you eat. It makes us feel good. Oh, my God. Look what a monster he looks they, like. They seemed they so nice, our parents. They did seem so nice when I was there. He thinks my parents liked him. Oh, boy. Oh. You, you're you supposed to know tricks, Keith. They tricked the shit out of you. When I don't hear words that I understand, I got to assume they're good. Isn't that? They lull you into a false sense of safety and judge the shit out of you. That's right. what it is. Like if the if the whatever they're saying, I assume has to match that he held the door open for me. So I'm like, all right, I guess it's good. Yeah, because Keith, you don't read tone. That's what's interesting. That's about none of my you. business. That's yeah. none of my business. <laughs> yeah, I think there should be special Middle Eastern shoes where the bottom of the shoe looks like the top of the shoe. <laughs> Ooh, just like little three, you see those three D chop drawings. In? It could be flat, but it'll shark look. Shark Middle East. Yeah. Oh my so, god, that's so good. I want to so be comfortable around my in laws. No, 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 no! Don't say words like that. Don't say don't <laughs> don't say I want to be comfortable around my in laws. What, 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 I get it. You're in you're in America. Good for you. Good for you, America. Sit down, relax. I don't even know which accent that is. I, I don't like know it, if my it, project's it getting picked up or not. <laughs> Wait, that is so here? funny i also thought it was a religious a muslim thing that's interesting maybe it is just a cultural thing yeah because i imagine yeah i didn't know that i thought it was just muslims that cared about the soul of the foot for some reason but i could see how yeah culturally because you don't want to be like someone it's like you know in america like you're not supposed to turn your back to someone i guess that's considered rude why wouldn't your the soul of your foot being like in someone's face I'm just because right here. Don't let them get you. Don't, <laughs> We're across is... the room in their face. <laughs> Come on. You're not. <laughs> I'm so in the next th- room. <laughs> Where do, why do they think throwing a shoe at somebody is rude? Where do these things start from? <laughs> I have an to... obsession with shoes. <laughs> I went saw, but this this is how far we go, right? Like we we're trying to be like, well, look, it's a culture, it's a it's a religion, and and you know, like be open minded and all of that stuff. And I'm not shitting on just Muslims or Arab culture because I do think the soul thing is an Arab culture thing. Um, I'm talking about like when it's silly, it's just silly, and let's be honest. So BuzzFeed did this thing a long time ago at at some of the peak of their the height of their um. 
uh, uh, popularity, they were doing this thing. They, they started getting a little political and they were like, well, let's what's wrong with the hijab? You know, the thing that that uh, the scar- more the religious scar- Muslim people wear to cover or the women cover their face. They cover, you know, that whole robe thing. And so they had these white girls, um, non-Muslim, go out in a hijab. And it's like, um, and they had people of Muslim faith explain it to them. Like, hey, it's for um, modesty. It's for just like you get to be yourself and you're not being judged by the way you look. And it's it's like a focus on a different thing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, look at that. And like the, the white Americans are like, oh, wow. You know, I never thought of it like that. The modesty thing. Oh, I could see where that's more respectful and, you know, kind of covering the body. And then the the unveiling is a little more, you know, could be more sexy even and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, why aren't the guys doing it? Because that blows everything out of the water. And it's like, yes, we're trying to be lefty and we're trying to be open, but don't talk to me about modesty. Like it's the number one thing you can do for your self-esteem and for your culture and for people and for yourself. And then you're not doing it because I am absolutely 100% beneath you in the writings, in the teachings, in the followings. I am not where you are. So don't tell me this thing is for my own comfort and there's some next level shit that I'm experiencing because you're mandating this. So that was, that was some weird experiment of people trying to be a little too open about like, Oh, well maybe that's stop. If it's silly, it's silly. Yeah. You're going to get a fatwa for saying, I mean, I don't disagree (laughs) with you. (laughs) Yeah. Quickly finish up with, but then you get, tomatoes with the eggs <laughs> it's all worth it oh god they'll praise they'll praise <laughs> god I, I, it's, it's well, this- i know it's overwhelming when i don't know what kind of salad to order at these different places i'm like <laughs> your salad i'll take what salad is our salad i'm like the one that sits tiny and it's your salad i don't even know the other salads exist you're the <laughs> just call it mediterranean that'll that'll right. be mm-hmm. the catch-all you okay, know what I good. you know what I started seeing it as shepherd salad. So Oh, I've not, seen that too. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Shepherd salad, true. not Israeli salad, not Arab salad. Just, just okay. call it yeah. Shepherds Gender like, neutral. we're all shepherds. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Why can't we just say salad? Why does it have to be so? The one, the one, <laughs> the one true salad ordained by Allah. <laughs> I don't know where I could say that or not, but maybe shepherd I could stick with. Um, the chosen one of the... salad. Sorry. What's that? <laughs> the chosen salad. Yes. I'll Can t- I tell? <laughs> I'll I'll tell you this about the Muslim religion is so brilliant because five times a day they stretch and do yoga. I fucking honestly love that. Yeah, the, I the used carpet. To, I, yeah, it's a nice. Sorry, to cut, I'm. I haven't prayed in like fifteen years, but. Now I think I sit and I meditate and I'm like, how did I do this five times a day when I can't even do it once for five minutes in the morning? But it really, and when I do yoga or child's pose, I'm like, this oddly feels a lot like praying, but, and then (laughs) I think of it as like reciting is like saying a mantra, but a lot of people I feel like pray just to go through the motions and like kind of just feel that calm. I, I don't know, but that's so, it, that is interesting. Um, I only realize that now. Praying is coming to terms with what you want and saying it to yourself or out loud, sort of admitting it and creating a list. Other people call it manifestation. Other people call it a mantra. And yes, down dog into child's pose. Tell me that doesn't resemble a a lot of the religious experience. Five times a day, brilliant. Your boss has to excuse you. Your yoga mat makes a lot of sense. It's not just like, you know, Lululemon all over the place. People respect it. Uh, when I go from one post to the next, I make it religious. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. looks, looks easy. It's a trick. It's a real workout. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I see a, uh, the next to last time you were on a there, the, uh, the great Katie Couric put out a book of, uh, of her life, an autobiography. And in it, of course, she had to mention uh, Matt Lauer a little bit. And for him being a rapist, she wasn't too tough on him. She's just uh, it's just a shame th- things happened the way they happened. You know, uh, Matt Lauer is now saying he's ready to come back to TV. Did somebody ask? Just uh, I need you to know. No, 
Okay. Okay. If it comes up, I don't want to leave you wondering. So I'm just, I'm ready. Did hey, does he know YouTube exists? He thinks he should be able to have a comeback, said a source. <laughs> um he What uh, a great was... source. He thinks he should be able to. Right. Thank you, friend. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. One source said, well, Lauer's pals are said to be pushing him to make a move uh, and put him back in the spotlight. He wants to be in the spotlight on his own terms. What is, I don't know what that means. Uh, he was fired due to inappropriate sexual behavior in the workplace. And just to remind you, uh, that included at least uh, one accused rape. He had a, he's the one that had a, a button in his office that under his desk that you press it and it locks the door. And uh, supposedly he uh, drugged women and raped them in there. Uh, but he's set now. He thinks enough time has gone by. He said, I, he, I he spent... feels he's done his time. You know, he's like, I'm ready. Yes. I'm ready. I'm done. I've done the raping. You know, it's it's done now. I got it out of my system as as sexual assaulters do. Yeah, he's saying uh, 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 Louis C.K. just performed mass in Square Garden. Well, I think I can read a teleprompter or two. What's the big deal? <laughs> he knows he made mistakes, an insider says, and he is a lot more humble. Which is tough to be humble for the things that you didn't do. But you still know you shouldn't have done them, but you didn't do them. But you still learn. What did you learn, though? Because you didn't do them this is where it gets confusing. But he promised you he learned, but didn't do them. He did learn. He learned. And he's the, the thing says uh, he made some mistakes. Yeah. Getting caught. Right. <laughs> I, I needed to tell the person who designed the locked door. Does he have a copy? And apparently he did. Um, Matt Lauer has gotten his confidence back. The insider says. Did he lose his confidence for some reason? It, bum it really bummed him out. Oh, did we hurt his self-esteem? Sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. If things affect people, come down. Uh, he has his confidence back. He's ready to talk on the TV. Uh, he has had some job opportunities, but things always seem to get derailed, this paper says. He has a lot of opportunities, but then something like all of a sudden, like Katie Kirk's book comes out and the opportunities go away. Oh, she had to come out with that book then. But now he's going to give it another go. Uh, yay. <laughs> Mimi Terry is saying the other rapist come across more likable, I guess. Hey, tell me what you think about this. It's totally switching gears, of course. Uh, Madonna was just at the Grammys. She has. Uh, she also separately announced that uh, she's going to do a, a greatest hits tour coming up. Um, so you see her more and more. But she got a lot of work done on her face, and now she's do. It seems she's doing interviews saying it's misogynistic that we noticed that something was done with her face. And it's I think she's make me she's acting like I'm stupid and mean and I don't like it. All I did was go, huh. That's something. But she's saying that she doesn't really look that way. It's uh, this picture. I'll, I'll show you the picture and it'll be at the website. But uh, she says that's just a uh, that's a camera lens that uh, took a weird shot. I don't look like that. That is uh, misogyny that's going on that you're complaining about my face. Uh, I, what do we think? I think it's I mean, misogyny that leads women to feel like they need to have plastic surgery in order to still remain relevant in society, especially as you age as a woman. Um, I don't think it's misogyny to be like, oh, you've had work done. But let's be real. I mean, why do we have to do this? It's because of the pressure of Hollywood and being relevant and just that that emphasis on staying young and looking young and staying that same Madonna that she started and it's a lot of I mean I, I can empathize with that don't we have enough uh, before and afters to know we don't have this technology yet I think Keith that you are underestimating how much people would rather look at work done than wrinkles I think yeah yeah I think that um as like, I, I have to make these decisions now, right? My hair is going white. It's going gray. Whatever color it is, it's showing age. So it's aging me. If I were to dye my hair, I would automatically look younger. And people might not even notice, but they will listen to me a little bit more when I go out into the street. If you see crow's feet, if you see age, 
you see sadness. That's what people see. You see um, not fun. You see um, you're going to lecture me. You're going to be slow. You're going to hold me down. You're going to be boring. But if you see work done, you at least recognize the smoothness, uh, your ability to stay relevant. Um, from far, makeup works better with you because uh, it doesn't fill into your lines. Uh, I think you're underestimating how much we put filters on TV and then people see people like Madonna in in life and she probably gets reactions that you wouldn't believe, you know, like, oh, shit, Madonna doesn't look like she's 23 and on tour, you know, like that's that's kind of how we remember. It's like um, Marilyn Monroe, if she, if we would have let her age instead of die. We would be like, eh, Marilyn, why'd you get work done? Why? Nobody wants to talk to you. And it, like, that's, of course, why Why did she get work done? Like, duh, why did she get work done? Duh, why she didn't get work done? It's like sort of part of it that you bring it up and that the newspaper has a whole fucking page on it. I but think that that's what so, she's talking about. That it's so smooth and bubbly. People would rather that than natural crow's feet. Clearly. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was ready for the Air Force to shoot her face down. Many people chose to only talk about close up photos of me taken with a long lens camera by a press photographer that would distort anyone's face. And once again, I'm caught in the glare of ageism. Well, if you don't look like that, then you don't look like that. Once again, I'm caught in the glare of ageism and misogyny that permeates the world we live in, a world that refuses to celebrate women past the age of 45 and feels the need to punish her if she continues to be strong-willed, hardworking, and adventurous. Yes, but how many 45-year-olds, to be honest, were on the stage with you when you were 23? You know, how many How many were you hiring? I mean, you get it, too. That That is also why you got plastic surgery, is because you are in the system. You understand how the system works. So... Yeah, we're all not celebrating women over 45. You know, how many people on her tour working for her on stage? How many people were over 45 behind the scenes? How many women were over five? That might have been where her women were. She might have. I'm not going to like just decide she didn't hire women over 45, but we're just now seeing women over 45 on stage. And that's because we have more authority to hire ourselves. That's it. And then we also have to address it and make it gimmicky. Like uh, there's like, I forget whatever. It's like a special or there's something like there was this stand up special. I forgot what it is. It's always like women who are of a certain age and they're still <laughs> funny and they're still alive. It's crazy. And it's like, why are we making it a thing? Just let it be. Just so we don't have to qualify it or point it out. Yeah. And here's been- a whole page article. Yeah, I've been degraded by the media since the beginning of my career. So it's always been happening, I guess. But I understand that this is all a test and I'm happy to do the trailblazing so that all the women behind me can have an easier time in the years to come. Yeah. And you know what? She has done that. So uh, credit where credit is due. I, I think she she blazed a lot for for women, for LGBTQIA, for just um, for women. Share when- too. And she's got some work done. Yeah. Share too. I, I I definitely am not uh, saying the complete list here. Uh, can I just have a <laughs> just uh, no? No, I'm saying side Cher note. Being the older one with her Oprah. Got uh, some, who else? Yeah, <laughs> Brene Brown. Oh, we got to name all of them. I Keep think going. she's guitar girl, but I don't know. Um, me, I'm 47. No, I meant in terms of plastic <laughs> surgery. Sorry, I oh, meant in oh, terms okay. of older singers who are like these icons who had plastic mm. surgery and are aged. Um, yes. Well, so <laughs> she didn't get any work done, but uh, if if she did, uh, we shouldn't act like it's strange. But she didn't anyway. But she's getting hassled again for something she does being a woman. But it doesn't matter because she didn't really get the work done anyway. But she did though. But she did not anyway. Wait, is that what she's saying? Is she claiming that she yeah. didn't get the work done? Or correct? Is she just she's saying, claiming she didn't get the work done. It. No, she's, she's uh, not. Yes, she is. No, no she she's we're... not. No, she's claiming that you mentioning it is unnecessary and sounds um, anti-feminist or something but we're t- like that. We're talking about a, a, a specific picture, especially that's that's odd looking. And uh, she's saying, no, it's it's not. I didn't. I don't look like this. It's a camera that fucked up when we know what a camera does. 
takes a picture and you are that unfortunately sometimes yeah unf- i i would i would stay out of that comment you know like that's that just shows that you're getting annoyed by it and then and then you know the keith malleys of the world are like why are you saying that and i get it there's no need for that but i don't think she said that she didn't get work done i think she said can we move on can we move on people and it's not me but anyways <laughs> But could we move on? She said that photo wasn't flattering. She said it would make anybody look uh, unflattering. Yeah. Keith, leave Madonna alone. You know she can't cry anymore. Stop it. Well, <laughs> fair. <laughs> uh, the uh, Keith and the Girl Week's coming up. What are you most excited about, Hamda? Well, I know the, the first party is going to be at your place. And what? yes, <laughs> and shit. I like that as a as a as a welcome, because some of the people that we're going to see, we've seen on Wednesday nights in the chat party and we've never met in real life. Some of these people we've never met before because they started listening during the pandemic. And some of the people we haven't seen in a while, like there's just the in-person aspect of it is so exciting. But the first party, like I said, is is just a, a get together. And I like that because some people are meeting each other for the first time who know each other online. Some people are meeting for the first time who have never heard of each other before. And I think we have a good group of people where um, if you're coming by yourself, you can make friends and travel together, you know, while you're in New York City, if you're coming from out of town. Anyway, I'm thinking that first party, if you want tips about New York, what to eat, what to stay away from, how to get around. We can also answer those questions in that first night as well. Um, oh, for example, we always shit on Times Square, right? Like we're, we live here. I grew up here. So Times Square, I, I try to avoid. However, you have to go to Times Square. You know, don't let us shitting on it on this show because we've seen it. We, we are done with it. But you should at least walk through, you know, like things like that. Like don't let us say Times Square is not worth it. It's not worth it for us. We've been there. We've but... seen the axe murderers. We've seen the drug stabbers, okay? <laughs> We've been there before. But if you haven't been there, you want to check We've it out. We've seen the Teletubby crackheads. We've right. seen <laughs> we've seen it all, but yes. you should too. <laughs> you should. You should. It's quite the scene and we can we can sort of tell you what to avoid and you know maybe what street to walk down on, uh what food to eat that's not going to rip you off in Times Square. So that you're not like, because you can get a burger and it's only $30. It, there's no need. That's not the burger you want to get, not in Times Square. So anyway, keithandthegirl.com slash tickets. Um, that's just what I'm excited about for this second. Ask me again tomorrow. It'll probably be your stand-up. Another day, it'll be the game shows. I mean, What is the more excited about? That <laughs> I will do stand-up in, after 1,461 days or telling you what chicken is overrated? <laughs> in Times Come Square. On. New York City. Oh, it's so Keith, cool. I want to see you do stand up. When is it? Uh, April 15th. I'm going to be doing it. So Last I have day. to. Now, what uh, a fair. This is a great. I'm glad you brought that up. What uh, what jokes do you have that are probably <laughs> just a little too much for your culture? Go ahead. I got my pen. <laughs> that I'll give to you. <laughs> yeah. What the As a Muslim that woman. Hear? <laughs> who can't wear a tampon. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Neither can I. I don't yeah. like it. Okay, yeah, that'll I, be relatable already, yeah, I can see. Yeah, okay. it fits your persona. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I, I got to be a virgin till I die. Uh, that one fits you. That, yeah, you've already got that one down. Um, well, because then you could participate in being one of the seven, one of somebody 72, right? And there like, you go, yeah. Next level your life, even after life, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's That's- a there's a whole party going on there. Okay, there's That'd a whole after good. party. You can. Be- <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. All right, this is going well. Anything? Uh, uh, anything like um, anything about food? You're not going to be using. Anything about food? That's funny. I actually really love food, and I mm-hmm. uh, I'm a nutritionist by trade, and I don't have a single joke about it. Okay. And I don't know why it's not funny to me. I, I don't know what's funny about it. Maybe I don't know. I you know what's funny? Check this out. As a nutritionist, have you ever come across from this? Uh, okay, I eat until maybe the bag of chips is gone. Now, sometimes that's regrettable, but it happens, right? The sandwich, you either eat a half or both halves, but you probably don't eat a half and then like two bites and then put it. It's like weird. I don't know. You just start. Okay. Keith Malley. 
will only eat until he's full. And then no matter how much is on the plate or in the potato chip bag, he will put it away. He will eat half a Klondike bar. And even though there is no way to take a bite out of Klondike bar and for it to be nice and even, the chocolate things fly all over the place, he finds a way to fold it up, <laughs> tie it up nice, and put it away. Now, as a nutritionist, this is people's goal. Am I right? Like, oh, Keep, well, this full. is like primo, like what I try to train people to do. <laughs> mindful eating, intuitive eating. That is absolutely. I mean, it's it's very hard to do because we're programmed to eat the portion that's in front of us. Whether that's why if you had a small bag of chips, you'd finish it. But you have a large bag of chips, you'd finish it. And just visually, your brain is not thinking about, oh, how much am I eating until it's done, whether it's cut up into squares. But yeah, that that's amazing. And right? you still are not ripped. How is that possible? <laughs> oh, no, she made it bad. Oh, oh there. I'm that's kidding, jealousy. That's, that's, mean, that's, that's mean. That's mean. You look great. You, you don't have to defend Madonna, okay? I'm, oh. That was mean. That was that was for Madonna. It is for Madonna. I'm sorry, Keith. You're a dude. You can... No, but honestly, you, you got to come and maybe lecture my clients because I don't even know how to get people to do that. I mean, I kind of do, but it doesn't work. A lot of people... I think you just have to cut up the portion before you eat it. Very few people have the discipline to stop when they're full. You got to pre-cut it, put the rest of the conduct far away. And yeah, why? Keith it. is such a freaking psycho. Is this only in psychos? Like, do you know. have to be a little like you have to be a little to... obsessive? Are you obsessive? No. Have... Oh, eh, well. about some things. Come some on. things, yeah. things you yeah. care about. I'm sex. I'm so obsessive. You know, <laughs> can't uh, stop thinking about it. Yeah, no, no, you hard have to work, ask him, not really you have, obsessive. You, you have know? to ask him in Keith Malley way, not obsessive. Do you need things just so sometimes, Keith? Things should be right. <laughs> What's the fucking point? Your way. I, I, those your ways way. are going to be. <laughs> um, I, that is right. actually pretty. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not even odd. that disciplined. That's interesting. I'd like to follow you around as a case study, if that's okay. I, I would understand. <laughs> Let's see what's going on out there. There's got to be somebody's got to have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> we need a whole team. I mean, it's not like he grew up right. It's so odd that he had this one gift. That is. Did you learn that from childhood or no? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I learned anything from childhood, to be honest. <laughs> Do you know the number of? Uh, I said, how many days is it? Four years is uh, I had to look that up, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't think I learned anything. I mean, um, five times, but that's a lot. That's a lot. Of I did. I did learn you have to you eat your dessert after your meal. And it's crazy that people can just eat dessert at random times to me. It doesn't go. See, that's too much. He won't randomly eat an ice cream. Did, did he have a meal? And now we're eating dessert. Then he can have an ice cream. Mm. But he can't just have an ice cream well, can you keith you, are you allowed to eat popcorn outside of a movie theater you you're allowed you can you, you can, can. But does a movie need to be happening even in your Ooh. home like no no you could no you, you just could, play it on silent <laughs> you, you <laughs> could just eat popcorn have you ever in the next eaten? room <laughs> right have you ever eaten popcorn just like oh you know what i want a snack here's i have popcorn. i have as a matter of fact but the but. popcorn is so much better with a sandwich with a sandwich what that is yeah. psychotic now. That is my professional opinion. No. It's like how you would eat chips. Like chips. Yeah. yeah but that just seems. Oh, right. Because you don't just eat chips. Right. Right. They go with things. Like yeah, well, they go with saliva, me. you know, <laughs> and they get broken down by taste buds. Do you have taste buds? That's funny when you say that. Yeah, no, yeah. I have taste buds. I do. Oh, uh, all right. Maybe the alcohol washed them out. I don't, you know, like, <laughs> it's a numbing cream, right? So <laughs> I could taste that different things taste different than other things. So, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, th I thought maybe it was just texture, like the texture of chips goes with the texture of a sandwich until the texture of my stomach says stop. <laughs> <laughs> do you, no, but really, uh, you're blessed. Do, well, what made you get into you nutrition in the first place, Lothair? Um, to have some control over something. 
Yeah, I'm definitely obs- I'll I'll say it. I'm obsessive. My mom was really like a health nut growing up and then I also grew up in Alabama and then started seeing how people were not so healthy there and then started kind of reading about how certain diseases or most diseases like heart disease, diabetes and all that stuff could be prevented just by what you eat and I found that And also really she was trying to prove to her family that you don't have to eat halal to eat clean. Here's there other you go. proof. <laughs> surprisingly we didn't i mean we didn't eat pork but surprisingly we didn't really eat halal either we were allowed to eat like fast food and whatever like i i went through a fast food phase and then i got kind of fat in high school or middle school and then i was like oh i gotta stop eating the way everybody eats in alabama and then i started getting into nutrition and started and then i'm I'm not gonna ask you your definition of fat because that's going to be insulting to a lot of people but um we understand that (laughs) for me i'll say for me i was a little chubbier went through a chubby phase didn't love it and i was like i need to stop eating chick-fil-a and burger king for every meal because i was really picky eater so my mom would kind of just let me eat what i wanted but then i gained a lot of weight and then i hit puberty got taller and then it all I guess evened out, but by then, you know, I had to choose something to study and I was like, okay, I guess I'll go with nutrition. And then I really enjoyed it. I really like the, I, I like the psychology behind nutrition. Like we're talking about like portioning out stuff. Why do people eat the way they do? What did you learn? You know, how did your parents talk about food? Did you grow up in a big family where you had to quickly grab like your food and get seconds before everybody else did? Like, how do these things influence and impact how we eat today i find that this really is what guys think about all day right keith like <laughs> why are you thinking that how did you get to thinking about that can we talk about thinking about it is are your thoughts similar to mine all day right do you like when you're eating when you're out eating with somebody do you uh, do you try to help them out sometimes like they order something you go huh no, never, never. Okay. I never, I will never give unsolicited advice because, and usually when people ask, I'm like, I'm off the clock unless like uh-huh. they actually want, like when they feel like I'm judging them. But I actually find that most of the time when people find out that I'm a nutri- nutritionist, they judge me about what I'm eating. Mm. And they're like, oh, you're having that cake, huh? Uh, or you're yes. eating ice cream, really? Mm. And so I don't even like telling people that I'm, a- I will say, a lot of times in an Uber, if I told them I'm a nutritionist, they will use that time to ask me for nutrition advice. And I don't mind <laughs> because I'm like, hey, if it helps somebody, you know, not have a heart attack or get diabetes, sure. Um, but that's interesting that Keith was like, do you ever help people out? And and this was his example. I don't know if everybody caught it. Like when you're sitting down at a nice dinner with your friend and they order food and you go, hmm, really? <laughs> Did you catch how he was helping them? You catch that? I'm you not as helpful that? as you, Keith. No, I'm not that helpful. I'm not that nice of a friend. I don't. You don't volunteer your time. I and slap your work. it out of their hand. I'm mm. like, what the? What are you doing? Have an I apple. Go, I go. That's funny. Because <laughs> you just ordered the other thing earlier. I'll say. And then it's up to them. No one's judging. We're just noticing. Noticing is judging. That's why. Like well, I you got to do something. Don't yeah, notice. So. Don't ob- you can notice it. Just keep it to yourself. I tried to, and then they yell at me out of nowhere. This Madonna. Hey, it was a camera. I'm like, I was just, I was just opening up a newspaper over oh, here. Keith, everyone's always yelling at you. It's so that's weird. not really what I look like. I'm like, okay. I mean, we could have just let it go. It's hard. Now it's a production. It is hard. That's what it is. I, I'm, I'm hearing tone now. How? I'll tell you that much. How? Now. Athair is having a uh, album coming out of her own. This is a true story. Are we very excited, Athair? I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I uh, recorded it in November at New York Comedy Club. It was super fun. Um, it's coming out April 14, so you can listen to my Ooh. album, then go see Keith the next day Perfect. and compare notes and and see if he <laughs> uses my jokes. <laughs> 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 How strategic, Keith. He yeah, you knew, gotta I promise told, me. He emailed me asking when my album comes out, and then he's like, "Oh, I guess I'll do my stand up one day after." <laughs> <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. Um, uh, let's go do the uh, do the album real quick for us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How much time do you have? Uh, how long is this? Show? Uh, where Where would you like people to get your album? What's the best place? Um iTunes would be great. I think 
Spotify, you don't really get much. It's going to be streaming on Sirius XM, Pandora, all the like streaming services and Spotify. But if you can get it on iTunes, it's going to come out April 14th. It's called Denied Entry. And if you follow me at Ethereum Yakub, I'll be posting about it leading up to it and all of that fun stuff. Denied yeah. Entry isn't about your tampon stories, is it? Maybe. We'll see. Well, it's a double just- entendre, Keith. <laughs> Oh my god, well I can't take the risk. All right. Well, it's whatever people... you want it to be that helps you buy the album. Okay. <laughs> so for Keith, it's all butt stuff. Yeah, I, just, butt stuff. I had a butt stuff joke in there and then it came out pretty bad. But now <laughs> the butt stuff joke in there is now out and we can close the show. Go buy your theater's uh, things. <laughs> uh there you coob. A T H E E R. Y A C O U B, just like you would think. You can go to that.com. You can check it out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Athair, great seeing you again. Thank you so much for your time. Great to see you. Sorry for insulting you earlier. <laughs> you know what? That you even remembered is sweet. Thank you. 